In the last lecture, we exported orders from a spreadsheet and turned them into a report that we saved as CSV data. Now our boss requests this data as a shiny PDF report on her desk. Let's do that, no problem. But wait, the standard library has no PDF package, right? Luckily, after a short search, we find a package called GoFPDF on GitHub. After go getting the package, we can start coding right away. As a first step, let's sketch out the top level flow within function main. This flow is quite simple as it consists of only a few linear steps. First, we load the CSV data, then we create a new PDF document and write the title and the current date. After that, we create the table header and fill the table. And we should take the opportunity and beef up our report with a nice logo. And finally, we write out our finished record to a file. A somewhat unusual feature of GoFPDF is that it does not return errors in the usual way. Instead, if one of the methods of the FPDF object triggers any error, the FPDF object stores this error and lets all subsequent method calls fall through. The error can then be verified by calling FPDF's R method and printed by calling its error method. Loading a CSV file is no problem for us. We had this last time when dealing with CSV data. We can reuse the load CSV function unchanged. Where do we get the path to a CSV file from? The easiest option is to read it from the command line when calling our code. We use a small helper function named path to fetch the path from os.args. If no path is passed via the command line, the slice os.args contains only one entry, the name of the executable. In this case, path shall return a suitable default value. Using this function, we now can pass a path to load CSV in function main. Next, we create a new PDF document. Remember to go get the third-party package GoFPDF and to ensure the code imports this package. Usually, the Go plugin of your editor should take care of this when using the package for the first time. The package provides a function named new to create a new PDF document with landscape or portrait orientation, the unit used for expressing length and sizes, the paper format, and the path to a font directory. All of these can remain empty, in which case new provides suitable defaults. Function new returns an object of type pointer to fpdf that provides a number of methods for filling the document. We start by adding a new page to the document. Now we set the font to times, the style to bold, and the size to 28 points. Then we write a text cell of length 40 and height 10. There are no starting coordinates used here. Instead, the cell method moves the current position to the end of the cell so that the next call to cell continues after the previous cell. The ln function moves the current position to a new line with an optional line height parameter. Having created the initial document, we can now create a table header. This time we generate a formatted cell with a light gray as the background color. The cell format method takes a couple of parameters to format the cell. We make use of this to create a visible border around the cell and to enable the background fill. Passing minus one to ln uses the height of the last printed cell as the line height. In the same fashion, we can create the table body. Again, we need the cell format method to create a visible border around the cell. We also use the align string parameter here to print the cell content either left aligned or right aligned. Next, let's not forget to impress our boss by adding a fancy image. The image options method takes a file path, x, y, width and height parameters and an image option struct to specify a couple of options. And finally, the convenience method output file and close lets us save the finished document. Let's see how our report looks like. Awesome! Now you're ready to turn any data into a shiny PDF document. 
have a look at the complete API and at the original FPDF documentation to get the most out of this package. Happy coding! Thank you for watching this Crash Course episode. I hope you enjoyed it. See the channel for more episodes or visit my blog at AppliedGo.net or my GoCourses site at AppliedGo.com. Happy coding!